the summer may be ending in the northern hemisphere. But that means also that the summer is arriving in the southern hemisphere. And also, while it may not be summer, we will still probably have sunny days. So today we are going to look at the smart shades, outer ones from the smart wave shades. We'll start in a couple of seconds. This video is sponsored by Smartwave Shades. They did send me free of charge those outdoor shades that I will be showing you today in the video. But no money was exchanged and also this video will not be pre-approved and the first time they will have access to it is at the same time I will be releasing it publicly. Now that this is out of the way, let's talk about smart shades in general. Why would you opt out for smart shades when the regular ones are already enough? Well, they do allow you a bit of automation. For example, you can automate them in a such a way, no matter if they are outdoor or indoor, that they protect you from the direct sunlight, they give you privacy at night, but also if they are, for example, outdoors one, in terms of the rain, high wind, etc., that they automatically roll up, so they are also protected from the weather. There are also smart shades that are available directly in some shops, but in terms of customizing them, in terms of color, size, etc., you are stuck with what they are selling. On the other hand, if you want to protect your home, to customize it to your liking in terms of color, style, indoor, outdoor, then you are better off with companies such as Smartwave Shades. While they do provide a lot of styles and types of them, for example, roller shades, cellar shades, zebra shades, woven wooden shades, outdoor shades, etc., etc., I decided for the outdoor shades. The reason for them is that we have a very nice balcony, but it's also positioned in such a way that every afternoon after 12 o'clock or 1 p.m., depends on summer or winter, we have direct sunlight shining there. In winter, that's nice because you can warm up outside, but during the summer it's just intolerable and the sun is too bright. The good thing about the outdoor shades is that the type of the material they provide for shading doesn't completely block the sun, but it also is semi-transparent. When I say semi-transparent, it means that on the outside, nobody can see inside, but from the inside you can still see the garden, the trees, the skies and the clouds. Next thing that you want to be careful is the supported systems. Smart tape shades are supported by the Apple, Google, Amazon and also smart things. But besides that, they also have matter compatibility. And this is also the reason why I decided to go and work with them. That's the integration inside Home Assistant via the matter integration. Ordering process is very simple and there are a couple of steps that you will need to follow to finish your order. First step is, if you want, you can give the name of the shade and that is a good way to distinguish what you are ordering if you are, for example, ordering multiple shades at the same time. Next step is to select fabric. We went for the sand one because it's not too bright and it's also not too dark. Dark one would, of course, accept too much heat and would radiate and I was afraid that the white ones would simply be too white and that they would get dirty very quickly. So, sand it was. In the next step, you have to select what type of shade or what type of installation of shade you are going for. For example, there is a inside ceiling mount and also outside ceiling mount. In my case, I went for the inside ceiling mount. That means that the measurement that I measure for the shades will be exact measurement of the case itself. And why I needed that? Because I need to stack two of them one next to the other. If I would be going for the outside wall type, which is great for windows, for example, indoor windows, that is also okay, but then each window would have to have extra space available for the mounting of the shades themselves. Get your meter out and measure the width and the height and also depth. Depth is needing if you are installing them inside the window frame. As I said, I was going for the ceiling mounting type, so that's why I only needed to measure width and also height. Write it down in the table or select the options in the table, for example 27 inches and 3 eighths, height is 24 inches and 1 half of the inch, and in the next step we need to select motor. No, we are not selecting the size of the motor, is it internal combustion or electric? All the motors are electric one, but you need to select if you want to use a standard motor, which I decided not to go for, and instead I went for the matter one, because it allows me to integrate it inside all of the existing smart systems, but as I also mentioned, it allows me integration inside Home Assistant. For the roller type, you need to select either standard, where the roller rolls towards the frame or the window, or for the reverse one, where the roller rolls away from the window. 
I decided to go for the standard roll, then I selected motor side, I went for the right side, but this all depends on how and where you mount your device, as it may help you in future if you need to recharge the motor. And there are a couple of ways on how you can recharge the motor, but we will talk about that in just a couple of seconds. For each order, you need to have at least one remote. Since I was ordering two shades, I decided to go for the two-channel remote, which then comes also pre-programmed to control left and the right shade. But there are also options with six channels and also 15 channels. On the remote, you can control shade going up, down and also pause it. But there is also option to go with the wireless wall switch. Once again, one channel, two channel and six channel option. That allows you to easily mount it on the wall and not have a remote where you can, for example, lose it somewhere, misplace it, etc. And the last option in this section to select if you need charger, no charger, standard 5 volt charger, outdoor solar panel or outdoor solar panel and also charger. I decided to go with none because I already have very big power bank that if I need to recharge the blinds or shades I can do with that one but maybe in the future I will be adding the solar panel just to keep everything automated and there is no need to manually charge the shades when there is enough sun. The last option you need to select before you order is if you want to go with standard white, valence and hem or standard black. This is just your personal preference, so select either one or the other. Click on add to cart and the total cost of the product for the size that you have selected with options you selected will be presented here on the screen. If you need to add more, of course add, click on checkout, pay it and it will be shipped to you. The next step of course is the installation. My shades, custom shades arrived in around 10 days roughly and they did have to go through the customs. After finally getting them in my hands, it was time for the installation. This process is really something that you should do with two person crew. Although I did it myself, well, it was a bit harder than I wanted it to be. So in the pack you get everything you need to mount them. All the mounting hardware is there, everything is inside. So you just need to have some kind of a drill to drill either your ceiling or window frames or wherever you want to install it. In the kit for the outdoors one, you will receive two types of mounts. One is L-shaped and the other one is just straight flat. I used combo of both of them. On the external part of the shades I installed the L ones and on the internal part of the shades I installed the flat ones. It made it much more easier for me to align everything to make it straight so that it would be easier for them to be installed on the ceiling. Then you just have to pick your meter out and measure everything. If I'm not mistaken you have to have at least one mount at the beginning and at the end of each of the shades around 10 centimeters in. The rest can be distributed the way you want to distribute them. But remember, these are heavy ones and I do recommend that you have as much of them inside as you can. After drilling everything, once again make sure that everything is aligned because those need to be snapped in. You push one side in and then you just snap or tilt the other until it fits inside the groove. That should be it. If you have ordered external or outdoor shades, you will also receive one additional item in the kit, and that is the wire guard. Wire guard is used to connect to the shades on top. Wire then goes through the hooks or the loops on the side of the shades themselves, and then you also anchor them inside the floor. You need to make sure that they are perfectly flat or perfectly straight, so that the shade doesn't move left right and it can have easy travel across the whole length of the wire. The wire can also be cut to the size and for that you don't need any special hardware, I just used the normal pliers and I was able to cut them to fit the size needed with just ordinary household pliers. And that's pretty much it. And if you have a remote in the kit, you will now be able to use that remote to also control the blinds. The blinds themselves have arrived around 60% charged, so I also took this opportunity to charge them to 100% and I was ready to play with them. Unfortunately, after I installed them, the weather was really bad, so I had to wait for a couple of sunny days to record some b-rolls to show you how everything looks. But believe me, even during the rain, we did use them to just put a bit of shade or to prevent part of the rain coming on the balcony. Remember that those wire guides or wire rails or this wire will also help you in case of wind. But don't use the shades on the high wind. If you expect high wind or if you have high wind, I would recommend for you to completely close them or roll them up. Now it was time to add this to my system. And 
I was really surprised on how easy it is or how easy it was to edit inside Home Assistant. So for this, you need to have a mobile app or companion app because pairing with Matter also requires BLE, scanning QR codes, etc, etc. And this process cannot be done that easily or at all if you are just using the web instance of Home Assistant. Pick up your Android or iOS companion app, go to integrations, click on plus sign and here select add matter device. You will present it with two options. One is to add new device and the other one is to add device that has already been paired with something. And yes, you can have matter devices in multiple ecosystems. So for us, let's start with Home Assistant. I selected, no, this is a new device. The camera opened up and then I needed to scan the QR code. And this QR code is actually located on three places on the curtains themselves. So it's very easy to find them and to scan it. And this whole process took around 10, maybe 15 seconds for the app to recognize the matter shades, for it to exchange credentials or whatever else was also exchanged. And the shades were added to Home Assistant. I repeated the same process for the right one. And in less than two minutes, I had both shades inside Home Assistant recognized and able to control them. So what do you get when you add the shades to Home Assistant? If we look at the specifics of the device, we have logbook and logbook will give you information about what's going on with the device. This is not just logging the information that is going on in Home Assistant, for example, making a service call to open it, stop it, close it, etc. But it also provides information if the shade itself was controlled via the remote. So, for example, if somebody used remote, like this one here, you will see this information here. But as I said, you can also use controls in Home Assistant and they are close cover, stop and also open cover. In terms of configuration, you can see if there is update available or not. This one is currently up to date and you can also press to identify the shades. If, for example, you have three, four, five and you do not know which device is which shade, you can press this one and the shade should slightly move down, up, down, up. And that will make it easier for you to identify what shade you are trying to control. And then we also have diagnostics. This is the battery information and the current battery voltage. If you have now decided to add this shade also to some other ecosystem, there is also option for that one. You can click on share device, click on share device, and you will be presented with the matter code that you can then, for example, scan with the Google smart home app, Amazon smart home app, or also Apple smart home app. And then this device will be also bound to that specific ecosystem, meaning that you can have device in home assistant, but also other smart homes. Of course, now comes the fun part. And fun part is automating stuff, because adding them simply to Home Assistant allows us to use Home Assistant as a remote. But the advantage of the smart home is to smarten things up. And that means that we do not need to manually control. Instead, we can, for example, use automations. For example, this one. This one tells you that each morning before sunrise, so 20 minutes before sunrise, if there is a person at home, we are using service to check if people are at home or not, we want to close the cover. If you want simple automations, you can use same automation that, for example, after the sun has set, automatically open the blinds or the shades. But there are also other more complex things that you can do. I will not be going into details into this video, but I will give you some hints where you can look for that. For example, in Home Assistant, we have new templates that you can use. And this template allows you to automate things inside your home depending on the angle of attack of the sun towards your windows, balcony or wherever you want to install the shades. This will calculate the angles and times at what point does the shade need to be up or down in order for it to block direct sunlight. And this is really awesome way, but it's also not that easy. But there are also other additional options that you can find inside the Home Assistant Community Store to improve your experience, either by controlling or to have much nicer UI. And that way you can have easy controls from within Home Assistant to either open, close or stop the shades. In terms of responses, so far I haven't seen any big issues in the response or latency between the control. It usually is done in the range of around one second. When you press the button, it takes second or a bit less for the shades to start coming up or going down. 
And this is pretty much it. Don't forget to check out the links in the video description where you can find the links to all of those different blinds or shades, plus also some accessories that can further customize or improve your smart home experience. And if you want to read up more, you can see here on the website how it works with Apple Home, Amazon Smart Home, Google Home or SmartThings ecosystem. The manual that arrives with the equipment both in terms of installation and also configuring them is very well written. And I do advise for you to keep the manual because it can help you in future if for example you want to add more devices to the remote, if you for example want to change the speed of the device or do some other further customization. I really do hope that you did find this video interesting and if you did find this video interesting don't forget to give it a thumbs up because it means not just a lot to me but it also helps with YouTube algorithms. Also, if you already have smart shades, I really would like to hear what kind of shades you have, what is the manufacturer and what are your pros or cons, in your opinion. And before I end up the video, I also want to say thanks to all those wonderful people that are supporting me and that have become YouTube channel members. Thank you all for all of your support. But let's not forget each and every one of you who has watched, shared, commented or liked my videos. Thank you. If you too want to support the channel, you can do so by clicking the join button down below and becoming a YouTube channel member for only 2 euros or 2 dollars per month. Or you can go to my merchandise store and get something there. Last but not least, as always, you can send me super thanks and I will be super thankful for that. I'll be seeing you next time. Until then, bye bye and have fun.